Hey everybody, Chelsea here. Uh, today I want to show you some fun techniques with stencils that involve embossing powders, embossing pens, alcohol markers, uh, metallic markers, maybe some supplies that you already have on hand and I'm going to show you how they can work together with stencils to make some really fun techniques. So first up is this technique which involves several layers of embossing powders. Doesn't that look just gorgeous? The shine and shimmer off of this is really pretty. So this is a technique that I actually saw from Jennifer McGuire and I thought I would show it here. Uh, I am using my silver and gold embossing powders and then I like to use coffee filters to capture all of the extra uh, powder so I can funnel it back into the jar and then I'm going to use this beautiful stencil I love this one it might be might be my favorite <laughs> so and then I'm just going to use a tag here um, just out of regular white daisy cardstock Versamark pad and you're just going to press that all over your piece of paper and just create an even layer of the Versamark. Okay, and then we are going to add silver embossing powder over the whole tag, and then I'm going to heat set this. So once that one layer is heat set, you wanna let this cool completely, and then I'm just gonna take my Versamark and add another layer over top. You just want to make sure that one, there's no powder left on there that wasn't fully set. Um, and you want to make sure it's not still hot. Otherwise you'll end up with melted embossing powder clinging to your stamp pad. Now that my second layer of silver is heat set, I'm going to grab my stencil and I'm just going to place that over top. Since this is quite a large stencil over quite a small tag, I'm just gonna kinda plop it down wherever. Take my Versamark ink pad again. And now you could use some washi tape or some low tack tape just to hold both your tag and your stencil in place, but I am just going to be careful <laughs> and just hold it in place. Okay, you can kind of see the Versamark on there. And you would want to wash your stencil off as well or wipe it with a baby wipe. Uh, and then I'm just going to add the gold embossing powder. There we go. Then I just take my coffee filter and I just funnel back in to the jar, all that excess. And I can't remember where I learned the coffee filter trick from. I'm doing it for a long time and it just works so well. So now I'm just gonna grab my heat tool. And I'm gonna start heat setting it. So you just wanna make sure that um, you don't overheat it. It will start to lose definition and kind of pool into the silver embossing powder if you heat it too long. Uh, you want to heat it just until it's melted and then move on to the next area. And that is that technique. I think this would be perfect for Christmas cards, um, all different kinds, depending on what stencil you use, what colors of embossing powder you use. You could really mix this up and do all kinds of fun things. For the next tag, I'm going to show you how to use your stencils with embossing pens. So I have this cute heart stencil here. And then I have our three embossing pens. So we have a brush tip, a fine bullet tip, and then a thicker bullet tip. And I'm gonna use the fine bullet tip. And this would depend on just what kind of design you're using, how delicate it is. Uh, if you wanna fill in a whole area, you might wanna use the larger uh, bullet tip. And I am going to use my little anti-static pouch here. This comes in very handy. I tend to leave fingerprints over all my stuff. So this helps to keep the embossing powder from sticking absolutely everywhere. So I'm just going to place these hearts over my tag. And I'm using that fine 
tip. And all I'm gonna do, super simple, I'm just gonna go around and outline all these little hearts. Now I did test this because I wondered, oh, how fast is this gonna dry? If I do something more intricate, is the pen just gonna dry up on me by the time I get around to adding powder? How's that gonna work? So I, I did a little test and I left it for, some of them for five minutes and some of them for 10 minutes and both of them still embossed. I was able to put embossing powder on after that amount of time. So if you're trying to do something a little bit more intricate, uh, depending on how dry it is where you live, I, I don't live somewhere super humid, so um, you know you do have some time. You don't have to panic and try and get everything done in one minute. All right, so I'm just gonna grab my silver embossing powder. You can see all those little hearts on there. You could also freehand this. Um, so it depends if you want to follow a stencil design or not. There is the first layer of hearts embossed. Now I'm going to take this again and I'm just gonna try and offset them. So they can overlap here and there, but I want to just kind of offset it a little bit. And I'm gonna take my pen again. You'll want your first layer of embossing to be cooled off before you do this so that you're not uh, squishing any of it with the stencil. And you don't wanna be picking up any hot embossing powder on your pen, cause that will probably ruin it, I would guess. All right, so that one is heat set. So those are the embossing pens. I'm really happy with how they work. And it just gives you a little bit more flexibility for adding embossing powders. You could do this in clear, in white, in all different colors if you wanted to, all different kinds of stencils. It's just, I'm trying to give you the basic concepts so that you can kind of explore it and play with it uh, with whatever supplies you have on hand. This next technique, I absolutely love. Um, it turns out really cool. I have some artwork also to show you using this technique. So first off, I'm using my smaller stencils. So this was from the big uh, sheet with all the designs that I just cut up into little sections. And here's the little triangle one. So I'm just gonna grab a white tag here and some washi tape. So I'm just gonna tape my tag in place. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of tape to my stencil just to give me a hand and make sure it's not sliding all over the place on me. And then I'm going to use the uh, texture paste transparent mat. You could also use the gloss version uh, you could also use like the white texture paste. Basically, you just want a dimensional uh, medium. And this works really well, both the matte and the gloss because they have a sticky finish. So I'm just putting some on my palette knife and then I'm gonna apply it to the stencil. I try and remember to go in one direction and not uh, work it around too much because that's usually when you start to get some going under your stencil. I'm just holding the stencil nice and still and just using a thin coat. And then I'm just basically scraping off the excess so that I just have a coat that's as thin as my stencil. You could really heap it on there and have it really dimensional, but just for time's sake for drying, I'm not gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna peel that up. So keep in mind, whatever texture is left behind by the palette knife, that texture will show up in your finished project. Now I'm just going to clean up my area and go wash off my stencil and my palette knife. While this texture paste is still wet, that's the key, you want it to still be wet, I'm just gonna put it over my coffee filter here and I'm going to dump on 
my gold embossing powder. Okay, there we go. So now you have two options. You can either let the texture paste just completely dry, um, or you can heat it while it's wet and you're gonna get two different looks. So this one here, you see how that's all nice and smooth? It's dimensional and it's smooth. You got nice smooth texture there. This, I waited until the gel was dry and then I heat set it. This one here, you can see that really great bumpy texture. I heat set it right away. I did not let the texture paste dry. And so the bubbling and everything is from that, that paste. So it just depends what kind of look you want. Um, for time's sake, I'm actually going to heat set this right now. And then you can see, compare the two of how they look. There we go. There it is, heat set. Uh, it did take longer than embossing would normally take just because you have that wet texture paste under there. And once it's cooled, now I had a fairly thin layer. I'm not sure you would want to do this if you have it on really thick because it'd probably take a very long time to dry that. But this feels set now, like I can touch it. It's not coming up. It's not squishing out from underneath there. So I love the effect of that. It looks really cool. And so... So does it that way too. So it just depends if you have time to let it air dry or what kind of finish you're looking for. Here's a card that I made with this technique. You can see that beautiful shimmer. I did put it on the black or cardstock, which works beautifully with these kind of heavier wet mediums. It's a thicker cardstock and it really holds up nicely uh, to having this wet media on it. I also used the Comfort and Joy scrapbooking and the card making stamp and thin cuts. So I used just the thin cuts to cut out the flower and the leaves, which basically for the leaves, I just used another layer of the flower to do the leaves. Um, and then I cut them apart and put them under there. And then all the little sprigs and berries and stuff are embossed with white embossing powder and same with the sentiment, white embossing powder on more of the black or cardstock and you just see that shine and shimmer this is the new scarlet and the evergreen glitter papers and I just loved how this turned out now because I was so happy with how this card turned out I wanted to show you how to take a card design and uh, switch it up and create a scrapbook page based on the card design especially for techniques. I make a lot of cards basically because they're smaller. It's an easier canvas to practice with new techniques, to teach techniques. But if you're a hardcore scrapbooker and you're like, you know what, I'm not gonna make a bunch of cards. I wanted to show you that you could take all these techniques that I'm showing you and apply them to a scrapbook page. So here is a one page layout using this card as my inspiration. And because these stencils are 12 by 12, they work great for scrapbooking and I was able to use that design. Um, this background page is the black or cardstock. I love this stuff. I have to get myself a few more packs because <laughs> it's just gorgeous. And I've used up every single little scrap that I had of it. So I need to get some more, but you can see I did that technique here and I did let it air dry. So it turned out very smooth. I used the same idea with the poinsettias and the little uh, embossed sprigs and berries. I did the title that also is in that stamp set, the Christmas cheer also with white. And I'll just tilt this so you can get a sense of some of that shimmer. Now, maybe you are a double page scrapbooker. So I didn't do just one page. I did a double page because that's the way I do prefer to scrapbook. And that is what that looks like. I'm just gonna go up a little bit higher so that you can see the whole thing. All right, so there is the two page layout. You can see I actually used the whole design of that stencil, which makes this huge impact in the middle of my spread, which I love. 
And then I just added my photos. I used another title and then more of the flowers to kind of continue that design theme going through my, my two pages. I love how this turned out. It's super shiny, super sparkly. Pretty much everything on this is shiny or sparkly. <laughs> but that's what I love. So I just wanted to show you how to take a card design and let that influence or dictate your design choices for a layout. So that as you see me making some cards for all these techniques, if you only scrapbook, maybe this will help you figure out how to change it up, make it into a scrapbook page, use these techniques on scrapbook pages, um, and that way they'll be way more useful to you. So for this next technique, I wanna show you using markers specifically alcohol markers, I'm gonna be using a tri-blend Spectrum Noir marker to use your stencils this way. So even if you don't have a lot of inks or uh, paints or anything like that, you can also use your markers. You could even use colored pencils or watercolor pencils, any of those kinds of things. So what I'm going to do is actually tape down both my tag and my stencil because I do not want them shifting during this. All right, and then I'm going to start with my lightest color. And the trick that I found is not leaving your pen in one place too long. If you really hold it in place, the ink really bleeds through the paper and out around the stencil. So I just try and keep it fairly light and quick. I'm not using much pressure. I'm not holding it in one place for a long time. And I'm just gonna do a little grouping here to show you the technique. And I picked the hexagons just because they're simple, they're easy. I wanted to show you the blending on here, um, but you could pick any kind of design you want to do. The flower stencil would be really pretty with this. I'm going to use the dark side now and I'm just gonna add some shadow and I'm gonna do all three at once. If I was doing a whole bunch of these, I probably would only do a small group at a time anyways. I find if you let the ink dry too much, it doesn't blend as well. And then I'm gonna use the middle color. Oh, I shifted here. My washi tape failed me. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to blend right over that dark with the medium. Now, I did find, no matter what, I did get a little bit of bleeding um, out beyond the stencil. But by moving quickly and trying not to saturate it too much, that did help. And you can see how I'm just kind of scribbling over where that light color meets the medium color. I'm pretty happy with that blend. And I'm just gonna move this. Another stencil that I think would look really cool is this floral one. And you could do like a nice shaded flower on something with that as well. Speaking of the flower stencil, I did some pen work using that design. So, you could use just a regular black pen and a journaling pen, whatever you have on hand. I would say, depending on your stencil design, you don't want anything with too big of an end because it'll be hard to get into those little areas uh, and create very much detail. And basically, it's kind of like zen tangling. Um, you can do all different kinds of patterns within the confines of the design. So I use this floral one, but once again, it would use it would, um, sorry, it would work well with all different kinds of designs. Okay, I'm going to tape this down and I'm gonna add a couple of pieces of tape to this stencil. Hopefully that should keep it in place. Okay, so what I found to work really good, I'm just gonna get my pen going here. I went around first and outlined 
all my petals. So here is my whole flower outlined. Now this is something that is a little bit more time consuming. I have fast forward through some of these monotonous steps just for the video because I don't think you really want to sit there and <laughs> watch me outline all these petals. But this is definitely something you could do, you know, sitting down to watch Netflix or when you got other things going on and you want to do something that's kind of mindless, doesn't take a lot of thought. Um, this is something good that you can do. Uh, and also, if you want to look for different patterns, you could do a different pattern inside of different petals or different areas, depending on what stencil you're using. Um, if you look on like Pinterest or you can Google Zentangle patterns, there's tons of different ideas and uh, that could give you just like pretty much unending ideas of how you could use this technique with your stencils. So then I am decided to fill mine with curved lines. So I'm starting out a little bit lower. I curve my line upwards. And for all my petals, I want to keep curving in the same direction because I like the way that looked. And these are by no means perfect. <laughs> you do not have to have perfect lines to make this overall technique work. So I'm not going to fill in the whole thing, but you kind of see the starting place and the ending place with this technique. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. So I did take that technique that I just showed you and I made a slim line card with that design. My background here is just uh, white daisy cardstock and I put some distress oxide ink onto my mat, onto my all-purpose mat, just squished it out, added some water, and then just smushed my paper into it. And that's what I got from that. After it was dried, then I just did the technique that I showed you here. So I have kind of flowers cascading down the card. I stamped my sentiment. And then once all of this was done, I took some of the gloss sprays and I just sprinkled them on here. Um, so the pink splatters by the pink ink, the yellow by the yellow, and the blue by the blue. And that's how that turned out. So just an idea of how you could actually use that technique on a project. Our final card today, I wanted to show you the new Spectrum Noir metallic markers. These are gorgeous markers. And they have both a brush tip and a bullet tip. So you can write with them. You could do that technique that I just showed you with the uh, doodling inside the stencils. You could use these for that as well. I'm gonna show you them on black cardstock and just filling in a design. So I am using this stencil and I am just going to stick down my tag again. I did find these pens stained my stencil, but that's okay. To me, it doesn't ruin the usability of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with the bullet and just outline the design. And I do wanna hold my pen fairly up and down because I don't want it to go under the edge of that stencil. Sometimes if you hold it on too much of an angle, it'll kind of poke uh, underneath the stencil and then it kind of makes it a little bit fuzzier looking not as crisp and then I'm going in with my brush tip here and I'm just gonna fill in that design I love how these markers show up on black cardstock they're gorgeous colors and then I'm gonna grab this light green here and basically I just keep going and filling in all these little stripes with the colors. And you can see how beautifully they stand out on that black cardstock. I just love it. So you get the idea. So here I had the pink, the green, I took blue and then purple. 
and you get this beautifully reflective uh, pattern. Now you could also take a white gel pen. I have this one here, it's a Signo Uniball white pen. And you could use this to go in and fill in uh, designs or outline certain areas. Uh, you could also go around with a different color and once you've removed the stencil, you could add details that way too. So just another fun medium that you might have or you wanna try out to use with your stencils. So I hope you enjoyed learning all of these techniques and I would love to see any artwork that you make using these. I hope you will tag me in them and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.